Dixie Dean. It's just like I imagined he would be, just like my dad had described him. And he looked unbelievable. Yeah. And he had that black hair, he had a big smile on his face, and bingo. I couldn't take my eyes off him. Throughout the whole match, I watched just the one player, Dixie Dean. He was the best. He was unbelievable the best. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special episode of the Royal Blue Podcast. As I, Chris Beasley, the Echoes Everton reporter, will travel to the home and studio of the world-renowned sports artist, Paul Trevelyan. Dubbed the Master of Movement, the title of an exhibition of his work showcased at the Strand Gallery in London back in 2014, Trevelyan has immortalised the likenesses of some of the biggest names in sport over his stunning career that spans over 70 years. His unrivaled ability to capture elite athletes in action He's produced illustrations of the likes of Pele, Bobby Moore, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Johan Cruyff, Franz Beckmar, Srian Botham, Sachin Tendulkar, Andy Murray, Jack Nicholas, Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, <laughs> Sugar Ray Robson, Oscar de la Hoya, and Usain Bolt, just to name an illustrious few. Paul's a lifelong Spurs fan and having been born in Tottenham, but educated at St. Francis de la Salle School opposite White Hart Lane. However, in the 1970s, he approached Don Revy with his ideas for how Leeds United could change their image inspire both the number tags on their socks and adding players' names to the backs of tracksuits for pretty much warm-up routines. In his first, but it's his first and most enduring football idol, Dixie Dean, who we're concerned with today, though. Paul, who celebrates his 90th birthday on the 11th of March, was transfixed by Dixie ever since he was taken to his first ever game on the 22nd of February 1937, shortly before he turned three, to watch the then second division Tottenham Hotspur defeat Everton 4-3 in an FA Cup fifth round replay. Over two decades later, he'd be reunited with the Blues' most prolific marksman as he met up with his boyhood hero to produce the legendary centre forward's life story for the Liverpool Echo. This incredible series ran in our newspaper for a marathon 21 weeks during the 1960-61 season. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the master of movement, the living legend, the national <laughs> treasure, no less. That is Mr Paul Trevelyan. I was born two minutes' walk from White Hart Lane. Yeah. And so... I used to sit by the window after the age of two. I was yeah. allowed to sit by the window <laughs> and I could hear the roar when Tottenham scored. Yeah. So when my father came back with my two brothers and I would say to them, I know Tottenham scored two or if I'd heard three roars, I know they scored three. How did the opposition do? Yeah. And my dad always used to say, well, we won today. <laughs> If they had one, yeah. you'd say, no, the opposition got four. Oh, wow. So yeah. I, I could tell then um, exactly what was going on. Yeah. And so when my father said to me, look, I said, where can I go, Dad? Mm. And he said, uh, when you're three, that's the age. And uh, when they drew Everton in the cup, yeah. my dad said to me, I was now coming out to my third birthday. My dad said to me, Paul? If they'd have drawn Everton at home, I would have took you to see the match. Yeah. I said, oh, no. But they drew 1-1 one, one at Everton. It was 1-1, one, 1-1. One, yeah. one, one. I'll never forget it. It was 1-1. One, one. And my dad said, the replay's Wednesday. And he was a bus conductor. He mm. said, I'll work my shift with a friend and I'll take you. And I said, will Dixie be playing? And he said, yes, Dixie Dean will be playing. And so will Tommy Lawton. I said, really? He said, yeah, Tommy Lawton. And I didn't know how my dad knew that, but it must have been in the papers because when I did come to the ground, I knew immediately, immediately, that everyone, all they were talking about was Dixie Dean. Mm. Nobody else. There was no other. Is there any name? It's Dixie, 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 Dixie Dean, Dixie Dean, Dixie Dean, Dixie Dean. And I got into the ground and... I wanted to see the Spurs players because I was a Spurs supporter. But then when Everton came out mm. and I saw Dixie, the whole stadium rose. I've never heard a noise like it. I mean this, never. I've been to Tottenham, even their new ground, I've been yeah. there. But not like they greeted Dixie Dean. And they all said, good old Dixie. And he, he waved to the crowd. He actually waved to the crowd. Yeah. And it was unbelievable. And I thought, 
Dixie Dean. It's just like I imagined he would be, just like my dad had described him. And he looked unbelievable. Yeah. And he had that black hair, he had a big smile on his face, and bingo, I couldn't take my eyes off him. Throughout the whole match, I watched just the one player, Dixie Dean. Yeah. That's all I watched. He scored two goals. But everyone who was behind the goal, my dad took me behind the goal, because just in case the crowd was too big, he could lift me over the top. I'm right behind. I saw Dixie get his second goal, and that was with the side of the foot. It wasn't a thunderbolt. The one before was. But when Tommy Lawton scored the first goal, everyone said, that was Dixie, that was Dixie, because they wanted to believe it was Dixie. But I knew it wasn't Dixie because I hadn't taken my eyes off him. Yeah. And it was different to how Dixie rose. And when I met Dixie Dean, when I was working for the Liverpool Echo in 1960, 61 season, Dixie said to me, what is your memory of that game? Well, you must have one memory. I said, yes. He said, was it one of the goals? I said, no, it wasn't one of the goals you scored. The thing I never forgot was when you was running and you was on the right side of the field and the ball came over and bang, you hit it with your head. I've never seen a header like it. It went straight out to the wingman and it went faster than... I'd seen players kick the ball. Yeah. I couldn't believe the power behind that header. I could not believe the power. And that has stayed with me ever since. The way you leaped was in the... I mean, I've never seen anybody jump so high. Yeah. And you got right up there and bang with your head. And that stayed with me. So now every time since then that I've drawn, and I've drawn Joe Ryan, yeah. hundreds of times, I've drawn Derek Dugan, I've drawn, I've drawn all, all the great strikers, Matt Lofthouse, you name them, I've drawn them, Matt, uh, Milburn, the lot. It's always Dixie. I always base it on Dixie Dean, how he jumped. So those drawings, although the faces were Milburn, although the faces were Joe Royal, it was Dixie in the air. And that's the man. I, even Roy Race, when I did Roy Race, Roy the Rovers, that was the man, Dixie. Any time I, every, any, each and every time I've drawn a player in the air, it's always been based on Dixie Dean. Mm -hmm. He was the best. He was unbelievable the best. And I was brought up with the stories of Dixie Dean because my father believed that there was nobody, and, and I met Joe Mercer, and, uh, and, and, and Joe Mercer disappointed me because all he did was call him Bill. <laughs> and I wanted to call him Dixie, but he could, that's what we called him on the, on the field. We called him Bill Paul. That was his name. Yeah. And when I met Dixie, I said to him, oh, God, so pleased to meet you, Dixie. And he said, call me Bill. And I thought, no, you're, you're Dixie Dean. So um, I did call him Bill. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he asked me to call him. But I remembered that. And I, I just wanted to make sure that I did test him. I met him four times and I did test him the second time and I did call him Dixie. But again, he said, Bill, just like that, Bill. So I called him Bill. And that was his name. That's what he wanted to be called. So um, I called him Bill. But to me, I still call him Dixie. And when everybody said to me, it's the anniversary of you drawing Roy the Rovers, when you turned him into... Um, Comic art realism made him real when people was then starting to pick up, oh, that's why race. And they said, can we do the 50th anniversary when you did it? I said, no, it has to be the 60th anniversary. Yeah. I said, why the 60th anniversary? That's odd. I said, no, because I wanted 60. It's the 60, the 60 goals he got. That's why when I said that Tottenham could do the double, that was 59 to 60. I wanted that 60 at the end, yeah. at the end. But I didn't get it because they got beaten in the cup that year. So it's the following year that I did get the 60. I still got the 60. I still got it. They did the double in the 60. Yeah. And I told Danny Blanchflower, win your first 26 matches. Win your first 26 matches. Then you have to concentrate on the cup. And then you can win the cup. So they did the double that year. But um, when I did... The um, one in the um, uh, um, Weekly Herald the year before, yeah. uh, Bill Nicholson wasn't best pleased. So um, 
he said that it was irresponsible journalism saying that someone could do the double. Yeah. But I believed it. I believed that Tottenham could do the double then because they had a great team. But they didn't. And it's like Dixie Dean is very similar to a lot of... See, it's nothing new. It's nothing new. What Dixie... Dixie was the supreme... The, 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 and I've talked to... I mean, Gary Lineker, I did his mm -hmm. book with Gary Lineker. Yeah. And Gary Lineker told me so many things that he did on the field. And each and every one that he told me, I've heard before from Dixie Dean. There was nothing that you could tell Dixie about being a striker, being a forward, putting the ball in the net. Yeah. And nobody believed so positively as Dixie Dean. He didn't, he didn't have one doubt in his mind, and not at any time. Not any time. So when I was doing the double, and when I told Danny, you win your first 26 matches, yeah. and they'd won the first eight, and I couldn't do the drawings, but I, I, I couldn't, the pressure was getting too much. Yeah. I remember Dixie Dean. Dixie Dean. He needed nine goals with three matches. He got two in the first. That was against Aston Villa. He still needed seven with two matches to play. And even my dad said, then I doubted he could do it. I, even then, as good as Dixie was, I thought, no, he's lost his chance. He's lost his chance. But he didn't. He got four. He still needed a hat trick in the final game against Arsenal. And he got them. So that when I went to see Dixie, and he said, your team's doing well. Yeah. They can win the double, Paul. I said, well, that's what I'm telling everybody, that they can win the double. He said, look, look how far... Uh, 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 above all the other teams they are look how many points ahead i said I know, I know that i know that dixie but i can't enjoy it i can't enjoy it and he looked at me and he said but you've told everybody they can do the double and now you doubt it he said i wouldn't have you in my team no. i said pardon he said i wouldn't have you in my team paul you're a loser no. i said i'm not a loser i'm a winner i'm a winner he said no you're not you're a loser you can't believe like you've told Danny Blansflower to believe like you told that team to believe do you think we would have won the cup you think we would have won we won look 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 Paul you talk about the push and run team that won the second and then the first division well we won the second we won the first and then we won the cup now we believe 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 and if you don't believe I said Thanks, Dixie. I will. From now on in, I'm going to believe that we'll do the double. And, and I promise you now, I can get the cartoon if someone wants to see it. Yeah. I actually did in the paper, this is the key that will win at Wembley. And I did the Tottenham players. This is where for the semi-final. This is before the semi-final. This is when they were playing the final. They are playing Leicester. And I did the key to Wembley, the key to do the double. And I put all their names on that key. And Bill Nicholson phoned up the weekly hour and he said, Tell Trevelyan he's not picking the team. <laughs> it was the team that played. It was yeah. the team. Yeah. So uh, uh, Bill Nick was very good to me. I, he was one of my teachers at school. I never did any schooling. In fact, it was a bit like Dixie. Uh, Dixie when I said to Dixie, um, I can't do joint up writing, he asked me to put up. He said, Write this down. I said, I can't. I don't do joint up writing. He said, well, What do you mean? I said, No, I. I all I did was draw at school. I wasn't interested in geography. I wasn't interested in uh, arithmetic. I wasn't interested in writing. I, I didn't do any lessons. I was always over at Tottenham. I was talking to Alf Ramsey. I was talking to Bill Nicholson. I said, Alf Ramsey. I did Alf Ramsey in, in the Lily White. I'm drawing for the Lily White magazine. I'm still at school. Yeah. And I did Alf Ramsey. And I did him heading the ball. And Alf Ramsey phoned up the editor and said, Will you get um, Trevelyan to bring that drawing along? And I couldn't wait. I told all my mates at school, he's going to sign it. And I said, hey, Alf, are you going to sign it? And Alf looked at me and then tore it up. And that's the first person and only person to tear up one of my drawings. Nobody else has ever done that in my life. But he did. Alf, he tore it up. And he said, the higher the ball in the air, the lower the standard of play. What do I do best? I said, you, you play the ball on the ground. You, you pass the ball 20, 30 yards. You always find a, a teammate. I, I know what you do best. Well, draw me what I do best. <laughs> Not heading the ball. 
because I always told everybody in the ball there was all Dixie Deans. I'm doing like Dixie Dean there in the ball. But that's that was the obsession I had with Dixie Dean because he he changed my whole life. Yeah. He changed my life because he had a positive attitude that was unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, uh, there was no way. I said, but there must, he must have had a little dip. I mean, when the clock was ticking, there was five minutes to go. He said, Paul, I believe I would get them 60 goals. Yeah. I believe that would beat Camsell's record. He did it in the second. I did it in the first, but you can't take it away from Camsell. 59 goals in any division is a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So Camsell was, was a good, good striker, but I did it in the first. I had the best centre halves. And I promise you now, Paul, I never gave up. I always believed. I always believed. I always believed. And you've got to believe. You've got to believe. Stop getting any doubts that they're not going to do it. You said win 26. Well, actually, they didn't win 26. They only lost one, and I think they drew two. But they only lost one game in that run. And they did. They went on and won the cup, and they were the first team then to do the double. So um, I was happy, but I wanted them to do it the year before because I wanted the 60 at the end. Yeah. As it is, the 60s at the front. It's 60-61 season. But that's what was in my mind. It's at 60. That's why I do the 60th anniversary of Roy of the Rovers, Roy Race. Mm. It's the 60th anniversary. I'm going to come to Liverpool, and the first person who's going to get one of those shirts, I'm just going to be Dixie Dean. I'm going to put it on his statue. I'm going to hang it on his statue. Because yeah. he's the man. Yeah. Every drawing of Roy Race in the air, heading the ball, was Dixie Dean. All it was was the face, the face of Roy Race. So that's 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 yeah. the man I met, Dixie yeah. Dean. Um, um, he changed my life. He changed yeah. my life. Um, he actually said to me, do you, do you, um, "Let's have a round of golf." I said, "I don't play golf." Yeah. He said, "Pardon?" I said, "I don't play." He said, "You should." I said, "No." Uh, he said, "I'm scratch." I said, "You're a scratch golfer?" He said, "Yes, I'm a scratch golfer." He said, and, uh, you don't play golf. He said, no, you take it up. He said, up, look, listen, take it up. You'll never regret it. And I did. I took it up. And I did the Gary Player Golf Strip, but got syndicated in 1,500 papers worldwide. I worked with Gary Player, and I worked, I, did, I worked for Mark McCormick. I worked in America. And my biggest thrill is, is this. This is the thing I love more than anything. And it's all down to Dixie. If you look at this, it probably you can't see it because it's shiny. But that is the 19. Yeah. That has got the um. I can't take that off. <clears throat> take this shiny stuff off. Take it off. Let's take it off here. But this is one. I got that one. That's, that look. That's the poster when I said they could do 60. That's the poster I did. With them all, all the players signed it. All the that was before they did it. That was the double team. Yeah. And this, mm -hmm. I'll take this off. we can still see it there, Paul. Can I, can it is showing up on screen. Can they see it now? Yeah, sixty-six, really. first of the no, final. I don't think it comes up, does it? Well, this is a page out of the Daily Express, and there's a Gary Player golf strip. Mm -hmm. But that's signed by every one of the sixty-six team. Nineteen sixty-six. Everyone has signed it. Everyone. And I've signed that because I did the Gary Player golf strip. I wouldn't have had that. No. I would never have had this or a treasure above everything if it hadn't been for Dixie. Yeah. It was Dixie who said to me, take up golf, take it up, do it. Yeah. And I did. Because what Dixie told me to do something, that was an order. Yeah. I did it. I didn't, didn't disobey Dixie. No. And he you, was the man. You obviously came up there, like say it was 60, 61, wasn't it? When, when he... His illustrated life story that you did ran in the Liverpool Echo for, for 20, 21 weeks, was it? Something like that. Um, so you got to spend a lot of time with him then. And he, even then, you watched him. Look, with, the with Dixie, yeah. I tell you what, I'll give you the full breakdown on yeah. the Dixie. And if you want to know what sort of person Dixie was, mm. uh, I'll look, this is the best way to explain it. When I was talking to the editor, I said I can do... He said, how long, how long will it take, Paul? I said, 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And when I came out, 
Dixie said to me, you sure you can do it in 12? <laughs> I said, yes. He said, shall we say 18? <laughs> I said, yes, Dixie. Yeah. <laughs> so he went back. He said, it's 18 weeks, Paul. I said, oh, great. He said, I said, you done that with? He said, I, I told the editor, 18 weeks. But then because it was getting closer and closer and closer, you check that Liverpool Echo yeah. on the 21st, that was cup final day. Yeah. Dixie kept it on. He said, I've got another three days, Paul. We go right up and see the double. Du we done yeah. the double together. We done wow. the, yes, we did the double together. Yeah. That was Dixie Dean. He kept it right up until the end. He said, Paul, you, you, and I said, I've never doubted it now, Dixie. No. I've never, ever, never, ever doubted it. Mm. And I asked him, was there any, any, was there ever a time when he was taking a penalty? Then he thought, well, um, I've changed my mind. I do it, is it to the left? Or did you ever change your mind when you was running up? Or did you always? And he said, no. As soon as the penalty was given and I was given the responsibility of taking it, immediately, as soon as I was given that responsibility, it was going in on right. Or alternatively, it was going in on the left side. Mm -hmm. But I would make that decision the moment they made the decision it was a penalty. Then yeah. I made that decision. I made it. And nothing would change it. No matter what happened, even if the goalkeeper moved a little bit to that side, a little bit to that side, or jumped up and down, or put his hands out, or someone ran up to the um, uh, uh, goalkeeper and said something to him, never made any difference. I'd made the decision when the decision was made for the penalty, if it was going right or going left. And then I went up and bang, and then it went in. It went in, and um, we had possibly, if you want to know about positive thinking, yeah. we had the great Ted Sager. It was what you want. It was one of the best goalkeepers you'll ever see. Ted Sager was unbelievable. Played over twenty years he, at Everton. He was twenty years he yeah. played, yeah. and whole city turned him down. Can you imagine that? Whole yeah. city turned him down and they had 20 years to regret it. Yeah. That's what Dixie told me. 20 years to regret it. He was a great goalkeeper, Ted Sager. Yeah. And you remember him back, that that first ever game that you went to before you were three years old, um, Everton's visit to Tottenham Hotspur. And he says it's still vivid in your mind because this, your mind is uncluttered at well, that age. I, look, uh, why, well, why it is so vivid? Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it, I, I can... I'm t look, it's uh, it's eighty seven years ago, away. I'm ninety this year. I'm ninety in a couple yeah. of weeks. Um, Dixie said to me, "I'll cut back to that game." Dixie yeah. said to me, um, "You was off for your birthday, wasn't it?" I said, "That's right." I, I, he said, "When was you born?" I said, "11th of March." He said, "Oh, March." He said, "I'll tell you something." He said, um, "You check your Liverpool Echo." He said, "But I joined to Everton." In March, yeah, I said, yeah. "Really?" He said, "And I left in March." Wow. So, and I didn't realize it, but he passed away in March. Right. So there was it was a it was a thing there which I, I found very strange that it was March, 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 yeah. and for the game. And my dad, my mum, did made my look. My mum was knitting the scarf, getting it ready for my eleventh birthday to go and see Tottenham play. And when they drew Everton in the cup, they went up there. My dad said, well, forget it now. But they didn't. They drew 1-1. So when they come back, that was on a Wednesday. It was just before my birthday. I still got the programme. And my and my dad said to my mum, you better hurry up with that scarf. <laughs> and she finished that scarf. And I had this big blue and white scarf. And I went there. And, and it, everyone... And, I, I, and I've said it before, <laughs> it was Dixie. All they, all they wanted to see was Dixie Dean. Yeah. We were now in the second division. They were still in the first. We yeah. hadn't seen Dixie that season. No. They hadn't seen him, but now we had a chance. And Dixie come out, and I could still hear that roar. I, even now, as, as I sit here, I can hear that roar. And Dixie waving to the crowd. And Tommy Lawton, uh, was his partner yeah. and Lawton was 
I, I know a, a couple of uh, well, most of the fans were sure that it was Dixie that had headed the goal, yeah. but it wasn't. It was Tommy Lawton got the first goal. Dixie got the next two. But the thing I remember most in that game is Dixie in the air. It was his heading. It wasn't mm-hmm. it's the power of his shot. I know that he, he could shoot with both feet. I knew that. I knew how hard he could hit the ball. He like a, but it, it, it was his heading power. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he could um, he could direct that ball straight. The, 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 look, I tell you what what impressed me mm-hmm. is that when he headed a ball, the person running onto it didn't have to check his stride. Didn't have to check his stride. That ball, bang! He done. He's controlled it for them. Mm-hmm. If Dixie had controlled that ball for them, all they had to do was to run onto it, bang, knock it in the net or knock over a centre or pass it to someone. But Dixie, he'd taken, he knew exactly it, it was. And, and and the man who told me this was was, uh, was the great Arthur Rowe, because yeah. Arthur Rowe was the centre-half. And I said, in that match, everyone thought he brought down Dixie. Mm-hmm. But... Alpha Rowe told me, no, I brought down Tommy Lawton. Everyone thought it was Dixie, but it wasn't. It was Tommy Lawton. I said, but everyone in the ground said it was Dixie. He said, no, I don't get Paul. <laughs> it, was, it was Tommy Lawton. And uh, it was definitely a penalty. But they were flagging. It was a, ball, a wrong throw by Joe Mercer. Right. Joe Mercer hadn't taken the ball back over his head. He didn't. Doing it so quick, he threw it in quick. Centre come over, no. So they had to retake it. Now we were leading three one. Everton were leading three one. Yeah, we were three one down, and we came back because they were still arguing about it should have been a penalty and what was it, what was going on there and what that no one could quite understand what had happened no, and they were still arguing. <laughs> and before you knew, it became three two, three three, and Tottenham won four three. Yeah. We won that game four three. And uh, Joe Mercer always said it was one of the most exciting games he ever played in. But he was he he was a bit like me. He, he, um, I I tried to find out from Joe was there ever a time when Dixie sort of looked at you and said it's going to be tough? And he said no, never, never once did Dixie say to me it's going to be tough or we've got a battle on today. Never once said no. that. He always had that positive outlook, Paul. Mm-hmm. It was it, it was a hundred percent positive. Nobody could have scored nine goals in three matches. Nobody yeah. except Dixie Dean. That's why Dixie Dean now is unbelievable. Yeah. He he told me at the time that um, I think it was um, Babe Ruth went in the dressing room, and he said to Dixie. Do you know we don't play football while you're there? It's not the big sport, but we know your name. And uh, Dixie said, and we don't play baseball over here. Oh. And we know Babe Ruth's yeah. name. So that is what um, Joe Mercer told me. He said, um, he said Dixie was, um, was known throughout the world, known throughout the world. Yeah. And uh, because he was that good. I said, is it, is it anybody we can compare to him anybody at all i said look um he said no i said what about bobby charlton he said bobby charlton can't hit a ball he can hit a ball he can kick really what he can i mean nobody hits a ball harder i mean when i was working at leeds i said to jack charlton who hit the ball hard the hardest was it peter lorimer or was it uh bobby charlton he said my brother bobby bobby Bobby, no one hit a ball harder than bobby i said what about dixie and he just looked at me and laughed. He said, I never saw Dixie. Yeah. I said, well, I did. I said, yeah. Dixie could hit a ball. He could drive a ball. He could really bang a ball. Yeah. He said, well, I still say Bobby was the hardest. Yeah. So, um, but Dixie, he had it all. And he never once had a negative thought in his yeah. mind. Never once. Never once. Yeah. What was he like to, to work with? I mean, were you in awe when you came up to Liverpool to meet him? Just what was that? When you went up to Liverpool to meet him to, to do the illustrated series, what, were you nervous because of that? Because, you know, he was your idol from when you were a little boy. Look, the, the thing was, I was destroyed by Tottenham trying to do the double. I, yeah. I was literally, I mean, the editor, 
he was very close to saying, look, I'm sorry, Paul, but we won't put your cartoon in this week. Yeah. And I knew that was happening. So that's why I went to see Dixie, because I knew Dixie got those goals. And I know yeah. my dad never stopped talking about it. He never, ever, he never, ever stopped talking about Dixie getting them goals. So when I went up there, I went up there with not so much to do the to do the, his life story because mm. I knew his life story. I knew yeah. it backwards. I knew. I mean, I um, I tell you something. I'm gonna. T I tell you something. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna spoil you now. Yeah. This is. This will spoil you because when I was talking to Dixie, I asked him. I'm going to show you something. You won't believe. Yeah. You won't believe this. I'll show it to you. And this again is Dixie Dean. This is how Dixie Dean shaped my life. Trevelyan's off camera at the moment. So uh, it's an example of his, uh, his artwork there, one of Dixie. Right. So he's way back. Now, this is the thing. I want you to know. Why not? Why? I have two things in my mind. Number one. How uh, Dixie got the 60 goals. I yeah. wanted to know that. He must have been, no negative faults, no negative faults, Paul. Now I knew I was gonna get it. I said, but you got five minutes to go. I still believed I would do it, Paul. Like this. Yeah. I said to Dixie, when you had the motorbike accident, yeah. answer this, please. Please, please. And Dixie said, What do you want to know, Paul? I said, when you had the motorbike accident, you fractured your skull. He said, that's right. And they doc and the surgeon said you'd never play again. He said, that's right. I said, how did you get over it? He said, well, I was just had a little soft tennis ball. But what I did, I went to a football and I took the bladder out. Yeah. I said, you took the bladder out of a football? He said, yes. I couldn't have the football ball. But I thought, if I get the bladder, and that's really soft, it's not going to do anything to my, yeah. to my head. And now I can learn to rehead the ball. And this time, and you want to know the secret of why I headed them balls out to the wing? I said, I started the head one next. He said, no. With the forward. Bullseye on the forward, Paul. Bullseye on the forward. Bang. That's why it went out. That's what I used, that. And that's what I practice with that bladder. Until in the end, I could actually head that bladder and not feel any pain at all. No pain at all. And it's then I advanced to the football, but not until then. So I said, but I, you fractured your skull. What, what, I mean, you must have had some doubts. He said, I wanted to play football, Paul. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do was play football and nothing was going to stop me. And I knew that if I practice enough with that, Soft bladder, bingo, it would happen. Yeah. So what I did, this is how I remember these things. I remembered what Dixie told me. Now, this is, that is, this is what I'm, I learned to tell this to people. That is Alan Gilzine. And that, and this, listen this, that's Marshmallow, how to head a soft ball. How to head, learn to head with a soft bladder, not with a big ball. That's it. There it is there. And that, that went to number one, like the Paddy Snickers. That yeah. did it. And this is the this is the actual thing. This this is well, that ball. is the bladder. Yeah. That's the soft little bladder that you blew up. Yeah, and you learn to head the ball with that. That's what look they're talking about dementia now, yeah. uh, and about uh, heading the ball, heading yeah. the ball. Ch children, Dixie said to me, "Your neck muscles when you're young are not developed." This is Dixie talking to me. They're yeah. not developed, Paul. So and and they don't like heading the ball. I I never had that fear. I, I I always knew that if I headed it there, bang, it would be safe. I I wasn't gonna let it hit me on the top no. of the head. I kept my eyes open. I was positive. It didn't frighten me when the ball come over. At no time have I ever felt fear on a football field. No time have I felt fear. No matter who I was against, no matter what was going on, no matter what the score was, I always believed we could win. So I get that bladder. I've got this. This is the um, the pack. Yeah. This is this is here. 
that she sweet or product yeah. pack. And this is what I did on how to head a ball. And this is down to Dixie. Thanks to Dixie Dean. I would never have done this. Look, look at it. Look at I've got to open it up. This one you'll be able to cut, you'll get on the screen. Wow. Look at that. Out the head of all. <laughs> all these people are Dixie Dean. They're all Dixie Dean heading it. I've got Perry heading it like Dixie Dean. I've got Muller heading it like Dixie Dean. Yeah. I've got Christ. I've got yeah. Louis Reaver. I've got them all. Look. There it is. Look at that. Yeah. That's Dixie Dean. Yeah. That's thanks to Dixie. Oh, and that, that was it. I said to Dixie, what did you do when you hit the ball? He said, you've got to have a target. That's why I put a target on, on the ball. Yeah. I put targets, number one, number two. Yeah. You've got to have a target. Don't just head it and head it. You've got to have a target to head it at. Yeah. And that, when people said, what a good idea, Paul. Where do you get that idea from? Yeah. It was Dixie. Oh, Dixie. I got the idea from Dixie. Yeah. Because that's how Dixie learned when he fractured his skull. He took a soft bladder out. That's a little bladder. And he headed that, headed that. He said, Paul, I'll do it sometimes for four or five hours. Four or five hours, Paul. Yeah. Just heading it, heading it, heading it. Until I was confident, 100% confident, that the lever ball. Then I went bang with the lever ball and didn't feel a thing. Yeah. I did not feel one bit of discomfort. And I know I was back. Yeah. I was back playing. So that is... That is what I got from Dixie Dean. Yeah. And I know D D Dixie is um, your I know Dixie is your idol, but I wanted you to ask while I was here, Paul, about that other incredible portrait that you did, um, Winston Churchill, because I know um look, he's, he had that commission piece, didn't he, by Graham Sutherland that was presented to him this grand occasion for his 80th birthday at the Houses of Parliament. He hated that one. Well, you'd love the one you did. This is one of only well, two I, he signed. I was, I was, um, my father was a bus conductor. Yeah. And he used to um, burn buses very early in the morning, it's very mm. early. And he used to go into a shop that was always open at six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said to my dad, now the war's broke out. Now the war's been declared. I'm leaving. Yeah. I, I'm leaving. And uh, he said, you make a good shopkeeper. My dad said, oh, I don't think so. I'm happy on the buses. He said, no, you make a good shopkeeper. Why don't you take it over, John? Mm -hmm. And my dad took it over. And um, so I worked in the shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and my, my dad was, an, was, an, was a warden. Uh, he had to, yeah, because he was in the shop. That was his job. But he wanted to be a warden. He wanted to do his bit during the war. Yeah. So he was a warden and walked around. And... During the war, I had one little picture in my head because I I was five when the war broke out. Yeah, and uh, that's why they say I'm a boy from the Blitz. Mm -hmm. And all I all I could think about was Winston Churchill with his little victory sign with a smile. And I used to go to bed and we're going to win the war. We're going to be Hitler. We're going to win the war. We're going to be Hitler. And that's what I believed all the way through, all the yeah. way through the war. That smiling face. And when on his 80th birthday. Winston Churchill uh, was given a painting by Graham Sutherland, yes, and it was it was destroyed, it was burned, it was yeah. finished. He disliked it, so I was so upset that a smiling face. Why did he always draw him like that? No yeah. one's ever drawn him with a smile, and he's so I thought I'd draw him with a smile, and I yeah. did him with a smile. And I was working for Laszlo Honigs, and. The secretary was uh, of Les uh, the person who married uh, Laszlo was uh, formerly Ramsey McDonald's private secretary, and she knew Churchill very well because she was on tour uh, with Ramsey McDonald when Churchill was out of office and he was doing a book signing. Yeah. So she got to know Churchill and uh, knew him well. And uh, when I did the painting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Laszlo said to me, it was Laszlo Honig, he was the man who ran the show, and he said to me, Paul, uh, I know um, Bernard Sunley. Now, Bernard Sunley's built a lot of airfields for Churchill. They get on very well. He's a great conservative. If you give me that drawing, he will send it to Churchill, I promise you. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you think so? He said, he definitely will, Paul. So he did send it to Churchill, and then 
I heard Rosa laughing. I never heard her laugh all the time I worked there. I didn't work there long, but um, I heard her laughing. And I went in there and she was talking to Winston Churchill and she said, we've got our little Rembrandt. And I picked up the phone and, Churchill here. <laughs> I said, yes. Is that Trevelyan? Nope. I said, yes. Burn at Sumney Buildings next Wednesday, 11.30. Oblige. Down went the phone. I said to Leslie, he said, 11.30, Bernard Stanley Buildings, next Wednesday. Oblige. He said, that's a summons. Yeah. Oblige is a summons. We must be there. Yeah. <laughs> he's, then, he's invited me. He said, no, I'm coming. Yeah. So I went there with Laszlo. And when I went in there, um, Churchill still had the painting. And he said to me, I like this, he said, and I like the smile. You caught that smile, Paul. I said, that's the smile I saw all during the war, and that's why I've drawn it. And that, that is, I believe that is, that, that's the real Winston Churchill. And he said, well, he's not quite that the man who defeated, <laughs> as you say, Hitler. Yeah. But um, I tell you what, he said, uh, I think it's excellent. Mm -hmm. I really do. I said, can I have that in writing? And he said, I'll do better than that, young man. I'll sign it. Bum, bum, bum. And he signed it, Winston Churchill. Now, the first thing he said when I walked in the room to see Winston Churchill, he was sitting down. He never got up. He never got up. He just handed it about his hand. And I shook his hand. It was, it was very small, very small. Yeah. And he said to me, um, when, when was he born? I said, um, 1934. He said, oh, so uh, was you evacuated? I said, no. Stay. He said, oh, he said, so uh, the boy from the Brits said, where was you? I said, London. I, I stayed in London. He said, yes, I, I, uh, Bernard suddenly told me that. Yeah, he was in London. So your boy from the Brits. I said, well, it's your face, the smiling face with the victory sign. I, I knew we'd win. He said, well, look, what you've got to remember is that you must be original. Never, never, never give up. And that's what he said to me. You must be original. Mm -hmm. Never, never. Because he said to me, and this is a good, I've always listened to people when they talk to me because I've never had teachers. So if someone gives me a little bit of information, I store it away. And he said to me, you will never advance in life if you follow in somebody else's footsteps, be original. Yeah. That was Winston. You will never advance in life if you try to follow in somebody else's footsteps. Be original. That's why Elvis Presley was not it was the original. Yeah. Everybody copied Elvis. Everybody. And, and the same as um, uh, and Marlon Brando when he came on the scene and mumbled. Everyone said, oh, he mumbled. We don't even know what he's saying. He's mumbling. But everyone tried to copy Marlon Brando. He's an original. If, if you're an original, Marilyn Monroe was an original. The yeah. original stay. And that's why Dixie Dean is the ultimate original. Yeah. Because I'll tell you this, a lot of people, and I, I mean this, you listen to this, this is what I'm saying, I mean this. When I work with Norman Wisdom, Norman Wisdom uh, said he was um, uh, uh, a Brighton supporter. Yeah. Because he had, he had a flat in Brighton. But he wasn't a Brighton supporter. <laughs> he was an Arsenal supporter. And he said, and, uh, and when they asked me to walk around the pitch for one game, I thought, oh, oh, what am I going to do? Just walk around and, and, and just wave? I, I'm going to do more than that. And he said, I went up to the, to the police and I worked out that if they take their, the, back, the, the, the thing from under their chin and I can get the helmet off, I'll steal one's helmet, I'll run along with it, then get another five to chase me. They all jump on top of me and I'll get up still holding the helmet and I'll kick it in the goal. <laughs> so that's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> and the fans, oh, they really believed it really happened. Yeah. He said, but it didn't. But that's what I came up with. And that was normal wisdom. Wow. And he loved his football. I, I worked with Arthur Askey. Now, well, can you believe this? Yeah. Yeah, actually, if you want to see these buildings, listen, I've worked with them all. I've done every. Listen, thanks to Dixie, I've lived a life where I've never doubted anything. No. I thought I can, I can be the best, worst singer in the world. 
I could, I can, I, I that fin- yeah, 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 and yeah. I finished that yeah. in, uh, in the gay discos, and I said, um, uh, um, whatever I've tried to do, I believe what Dixie said. Yeah, you, you can do it. You've got to be positive. You mustn't back off. You must go through with it. You must, and th- that's why I say to, um, uh, um, when I do, uh, I do a educational talks, motivational yeah. talks at, at colleges. And uh, I'll send you some letters of what people yeah. say about me. And I always go up there and I always say to the children, you've got to believe, you must, you must believe. And I remember when I first saw David Beckham, uh, it was in a match, he was very young. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alex Ferguson said to me, um, who, um, who do you think in that team um, was going to make it. And I yeah. said, well, it's the dark-haired boy, the dark-haired kid who went past three players and uh, he scored a goal. Um, he's brilliant in the air. Um, I think he can make it. he definitely make it. Yeah. And he said, well, look over there. And I looked over there. The game had ended. I looked over. He said, he's the first one away. He's got outside interest. He said, now, what about the blonde one? I said, he, well, the blonde one, I said, he, he, he's not quick. Um, he never, he never went past the player. He never went past the player. He's hopeless in the air, but he can. He, can, he did set up a couple of the goals. Yeah. He's, uh, he's good at passing. He said, "Well, come back at four o'clock." I said, "Well, now I've got to get back to London." He said, "Now come back at four. So when Alex says come back at four, you come back at four. And I went back to Alex works and then I saw this kid, and he had of the football in the in the penalty area. And he was in the other penalty area and he was knocking the ball over. And he said, now you watch, if Tate, if it, 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 it hit about four or five, but you bounce one on top of that ball. And he did. And I watched him bump, bump, bump. And he, I said, it's four o'clock. He said, that's right. He's got no outside interest. He wants to make it. Yeah. He definitely wants It's all he thinks about is making it in football. And that was David Beckham. Yeah. Wow. So that's what I tell Think If you want to do yeah. something, that's what Dixie said to me. All I wanted to do was football. I didn't do any lessons, Paul. I didn't do geography, I didn't do history, I didn't do any lessons, but all I wanted was football. I wanted to play football. And that was it on my mind. And that's why he still remains the greatest centre forward there's ever been. There'll never be another Dixie Dean. I mean that, there will never, ever, ever be another Dixie Dean. And you can say that about so many people in life, you can look back and say, well, um, I, I look when I was at Leeds, uh, I did a thing when I said that Hunter was um, was a better player than Bobby than uh, Tommy Smith. Yeah, uh, that's what I did in the Sunday People. And Bill Shankly phoned up uh, Don Revy and said, "Tell that." And Don said, "Look, he's actually he's here. You can talk to him." Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I said to Bill Shanks, "I said Shanks, I said um, um, no one with Hunter." Uh, is just as hard as Tommy, and uh, he's bite your legs, Norman. And uh, um, he said, I'm telling you now, Tommy Smith leaves the bigger bruises. He leaves the bigger bruises. I said, Okay. He said, Come on, see me. I went over to see him, and he said, I said to him, uh, Do you remember Dixie Dean? He said, God, he said, uh, Don Revy told me all you talk about is Dixie <laughs> Dean. He said, He'd been taught telling um, Alan Clark about him. I said, that's right. I've told Alan Clark he's got to score in the final. And Alan said he will. And I said, what if happens if Arsenal score? He said, well, I'll score too. Yeah. And that was Alan Clark, who's my best friend now. So yeah. I said to him, a great friend of mine. Um, and so I, um, Dixie, I, said to, I said to Bill Shanks, yeah. how, how good was Dixie Dean? And he said, he belongs in the company of Rembrandt, Michelangelo, and Beethoven, mm. he's that good. He belongs in that, and he is. He's a one-off. He's. I mean, I. To, when I met him, I, it was because of Tottenham trying to do the double. Yeah. And I just wanted to him to help me get a positive mindset. I wanted a positive mindset. And when I finished talking to Dixie, this the first meeting. I left, and I believed a hundred percent. And since then. I've always believed a hundred percent. That is why I actually put on the back of a video in America 
because I never missed from four feet. I never missed from four. I didn't. Yeah, it was only from four feet. But if I used, I tell you the secret. I'll give you the secret now. I never patted to four feet. Yeah. I patted to six. If you pat to a six foot hole, it was always a six foot hole behind the four foot. And I always wanted to get it in that six foot hole because then that meant any borrow on the green, any borrow. I took it out with the speed of the ball and it went in at the back of the cup drop. It was in the back of the cup drop. And when I went to uh, um, the before the final, uh, when top that when, when when Leeds, I'll give you some little stories here. Yeah. When Leeds played Arsenal in the cup, my best friend was Alan Ball. I've got an Alan Ball England cap. Yeah. Gave me one. Alan Ball. Yeah, I, look, if you want to see if my friends in football, as I, I send you these things. They, yeah. what, what, uh, what Alan Ball said about me. Now, Alan Ball, unbelievable, uh, but he's an evident player. That's why yeah. I loved him. Uh, Joe Raw. I got a great with Joe Raw. Great centre forward. Not Dixie Dean. He was good, but he yeah. wasn't Dixie Dean. No one near. He was a. He was. 50 percent dixie dean no. but yeah. um uh, so when i did the putting yeah and i never missed i went to um on, on, on they invited me over to the hotel mm -hmm. and i went there and don said bring your little putting game because the the, they're a little bit edgy because they'd lost two cup finals mm. they're a little bit edgy and i went there and uh he said put a little thing down yeah. i said right four feet it was four foot away and i took on all the leeds players and i beat them all except johnny giles and johnny giles kept going boom 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 and johnny giles wasn't missing johnny giles uh, john really had missed all the all the others had missed alan clark had missed but not johnny giles and don said this is going to go on all night i'm going to move it back a foot i said move it back two that was the six foot yeah. he moved it back two I thought that's my distance. Yeah. I can get it in. Johnny Giles missed, and I went up and I knocked it behind me. I said, "I'm not going to beat Johnny before the final." And next thing I knew, I'm ten foot in the air. Jack Charlton's got hold of me. He's torn my shirt right down there. With a grand hold of me. It's yeah. true. And he said, "Unless you putt, you're not leaving." Yeah. That's big Jack. Unless you putt, you're not leaving. And I looked at all the money because they're all putting in fivers, all putting in fivers every yeah. time. Yeah, all putting in five, a lot of money. And I thought, well, here we go. Remember Dixie Dean? Remember what Dixie Dean said? Everything's constant, nothing changes. It's all different. It's just a penalty set. I made up my mind. It's in six foot, <whistles> straight in. Wow. I beat them, all of them. Yeah. And I picked up all the money, put it in a tall shirt, and left. But it was all, all my thinking came about from dixie dean yeah i've got a lot of help from alf ramsey about do all what the player does best i've got a lot of help from bill nicholson whose only advice every time i saw him was sharpen a few more pencils paul yeah. sharpen a few more pencils yeah. <laughs> the only thing he ever told me yeah. but alf was very good alf was always coming up saying paul you've got the drawing wrong or, Get the knee over the ball. You got him leaning back too far. The ball would have gone over the bar. Uh, you got him if, if he, he wasn't balanced in the air. He would tell me exactly what I was doing wrong. Yeah. So he was my he was my teacher, Alf. Bill Nicholson um, was at Tottenham, so I've got to know Bill well. But the best person who, if someone said, "Mummy, my father was very hard." He was the one when I was rubbing out. Said to me, "What are you rubbing out for?" I said. Uh, uh, my, he said, you weren't concentrating. I said, I was concentrating. He said, if you was concentrating, you wouldn't have made a mistake. Give me the rubber, threw it in the fire. I said, no rubber, rubber. I've got no rubber in this studio. No. I've never used a rubber since. Imagine that. Since the age of eight, I've never used another rubber. And I can cut a piece of board, you saw yeah, it. Saw that, like, yeah. like a machine. Look, look at my hands. Look, steady. Look at it. Look, I'm 90. I'm 90 years of age. And I'm, you know, I'll never grow old. I can't grow old. I can't. I would like to grow old. I'd like to be, I like the people to say to me, you're doing well, old boy. <laughs> no one says that to me. No, no one. No. Thanks to Dixie. Yeah. There he is. The man, the master. <laughs> False rebellion. <laughs>